Hello and welcome back to the Single Malt Review. Goodness me, it's July. Mm. We're halfway through the year. We're more than halfway, we halfway are, through the yes. year. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Time to get something done. What mm. do we got, Dave? It says well, Pocono. Yes, this is a bit of uh, patriotic pride here. This is another New Zealand single malt whiskey. The Pocono Distillery is in Pocono, obviously, which is a town to the south of Auckland. Uh, right on the cusp between the Waikato and the Auckland regions. Now, uh, they're a quite a new establishment, been uh, distilling for a few years now, but only releasing whiskey for a couple of years. Mm. And this one, uh, this is a very kind uh, wedding anniversary present from my father in law. You love to see it. Appreciate it. You yeah. love to see it. This is this the is Discovery, Discovery mm, which is one of their, um, well, part of their, their core range now. This one is particularly exciting. It uses entirely. First fill of bourbon, Oloroso sherry, and PX casks. Mm, a and, classic mix. Yeah. And yeah, um, national whiskey pride maybe, but mm. to the channel's shame, we haven't looked at any Pocono mm. before, and it's really one that should have been on our radar oh, yeah. much, much sooner. And also, just look at that bottle. Look yeah. At that. Styling. Absolutely styling. Mm. I'd love to know where they got those done. Mm. Also, just their logistics of getting first fill casks all the way from Europe uh, and the Americans down to here. Yeah, I can't imagine there's too many first fill PX casks mm. floating around the country. That sounds like a, um, that must be a pretty circuitous trip to get yeah. down there. Uh, there's no age statement on this, because it's be at least four years because of how the distillery operates. And bottled at 43% ABV. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, we've had a dog incident Minor there. dog disturbance, dog but that's fine. Um, any word as to colouring or chill filtration, or are they going to leave us... I believe there's none. Leave like, that a mystery. It's kind of been, I would say, if it was there, the fact that it's not mentioned, that I could see, mm. means I, I'm willing to accept this as to take it at face value. Oh, we'll just yeah. have to keep an eye out. Mm. So, um, a very, very classical mix of casks, yeah. as you say. We'll just have to see how the New Zealand climate yeah. takes to that. It's a warm and somewhat damp part of the country. Yes, and that's oh, pretty oh. jolly promising yeah. off the nose. This is based on how long Pocono have existed for, probably all of four years mm. old. So we're, we're not looking at old whiskey by any means mm. here. So... Um, that nose is already kind of punching above its yeah. weight there. That is pretty scrummy. Mm. So what are we getting? The oak is large and in charge here, which you'd expect from all of that first yeah. fill European wood. It's got a bit of a, a zing of the young whiskey and some fairly uh, strong alcohol notes, but the wood, and especially being first fill, I believe, means that there's just oodles of juicy character uh, bursting through as well. The vanilla mm. and honey off the bourbon casks and... There is a lot Stewed of... Stewed fruit and dates lot. and prunes off the... Um, the prunes sherry. is a good one. I'm getting a hell of a lot of ginger and eucalyptus ah, on this. Eucalyptus, okay. Lots of really, really mm. woody characters. It's one yeah. that's definitely... It's definitely been in the whiskey time machine in terms of mm. ageing. This has definitely been followed along or helped along yes. rather by the choice of wood and um, any, any climactic conditions that mm. are happening over there south of Auckland. But um, goodness, it is advanced for sure. Let's see what's on the palate. Mm. Oh, luscious. It's got a real mm, heavy, sweet Highland it's character. It's really heavy. It's a very heavy spirit character mm. in addition to that big whack of wood. Yeah. This is for a, I almost said for a New Zealand whiskey, but the science isn't quite there mm. on calling something a New Zealand whiskey. We don't really have a character, but for a typical, a typical new prototypical whiskey, in our climate, this is a really classic taste. Yeah, this is. I have sung the praises of New Zealand yeah. whiskies, which have tried wild and radical new things, uh, so Waiheke, Thompsons, and so on. Um, this one is outstanding in the way that it adheres to the classic Scotch uh, formula. It's got a very sort of it's a very very traditional uh, single malt, which it does very well too. So that is also. Yeah. It's a, it, um, it, initially this that doesn't sound like a compliment, favorite. but this mm. is quite excitingly oh, yeah. normal <laughs> um, in terms of its profile. Mm. You get when you're in, I mean, when you're in anywhere, but especially when you're in New Zealand, um, you get these new world whiskies, mm. these very young, very sort of first wave whiskies, and a lot of them, you know, sort of just figuring out. Some of them are amazing. They're all usually a little weird. Mm -hmm. you, you end up drinking one, and you're like, oh, that's that's interesting, but this is definitely one of those new whiskies mm. a long way from home a long way from the classic climate um and a long way from the hundreds of years of um 
of technique. Uh, this does not have any of that. Mm. This is one of the ones which could flat out fool me into thinking it was just yeah. plain old scotch. And like I say, that, that sounds like a bit of a, a, a biff, but it's not because um, there's nothing plain about plain old scotch. No. That has been refined for centuries to become mm. the um, the apex predator of spirits <laughs> that it is today. Exactly. Um, so this, it's a hell of a comparison yeah, the, I can make. This captures all that is good about Scotch whiskey, mm. but delivers what taste. You can tell this is a young whiskey, but it's got a very old flavour to it. It's got the uh, heft and the richness and the weight of something that's much older than its you know, more modest years. Let's see how a bit of water treats yeah. it. No, Cloud, I think this might be filtered. I, think okay. so. I don't think it's doing it any harm, mm. but, um, but I think, was I to have to hazard a guess, mm. this might have seen a wee bit of filtration, but who knows? Who knows? And that doesn't seem to have done any harm at all. That is, as it's want to do, it stretch the fruits out a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's, if there was banana in here, the banana would have gotten longer. As it is, we just have to... You can't really stretch a prune, but... Um, and to soften just, some just sweetness. Imagine it. Brought out some more wood. There's a thread of smoke mm. in it now. There's a thread of char that's mm. been exposed, presumably from the charring on those Long barrels, on. Yeah. coming through from the bourbon, but... Goodness, that is quite the revelation. This yeah. is, I didn't think we were making whiskey like this. Mm -hmm. um, I thought we were only making slightly weird whiskey. Um, this is this is in a certain groove, which is just, it's a classic taste, I guess is mm. what I'd say. Um, goodness me, I'd love to see this with a, with a 10 on the label. We'll have to wait another oh, yeah. six years for that. But mm -hmm. um, if it's tasting this good now, then that bodes really pretty cracking well for, the, for future age releases. Mm. Yeah, that really is, that's quite remarkably on top of what it is doing. This is a real exercise in incredibly good wood management. Oh, hello dog. Incredibly good wood management and really, really, really sharp blending. Because I think it would have taken both of those to get this whiskey where it is. Because a lot of the wood that's in here could have gone too much, too fast, yeah. really fast. It could have done it overnight if this is four-year-old whiskey or, or younger. Um, it could have gone absolutely nuclear mm. if the wood is this advanced. So the um, the subtlety, the restraint with which they put this thing together was really quite a uh, masterwork of its own. So very, very, very pleased here. We absolutely. should really, it is quite criminal that it's taken us this long to actually sit down with Pocono mm. of any kind whatsoever. We do need to hunt out more of them. Were they not on the um, the incorrect island, then I would um, hunt them out for a visit because I'll, I'll bet mm. they um, they certainly have a flash website that's for sure. Um, but yeah, this this is you can you can see me s circling scores like a hawk here mm. while I while I tread water. But um, I'm going to be a little cheeky and hell of just a solid whiskey. Top yeah. Up. Oh yeah, that's, well, that's always a good sign. If Dave's, Dave's going back for second, yeah. then you've um, You've truly achieved. Typically, keep my paws quite modest, but yeah. I don't want when, you're, when you've got Dave thirsty, smash. you've um, yeah. that's a special, that's a bonus point awarded mm. there. Now, this whiskey really has something for everyone. It's got um, novelty. It is it is unique and distinct and stands on its own feet very well. But it's also got the classic character, familiar uh, Scotch whiskey tasting points. And so, really, if you're if you're a traditionalist or want something new, then yeah, it will satisfy either way. Yeah. Nope. Especially if you like the sweeter scotch, like I do. I've decided, mm. and it's 87. Mm. Which, for four-year-old whiskey, yeah. max, um, that's a pretty mm. staggering score. I'm glad this isn't 10 years old, yeah. or I would have to be really <laughs> breaking some dangerous, dangerous mm. numbers out um, to score this one. Assuming nothing bad happened to it in the mm. intervening years. Like I say, this one, if, if this was simply left to go 10 years, I think it would be probably undrinkable because right. it's um, on such a fast track to maturation. Yeah. Um, so they're going to have to get their blending now back into action to do um, mm. older ones. But this, I think, proves, if nothing else, they've got the chops. Oh yeah. So what's your number? I'm going even higher. This one is a 91 for me. It's just, mm. it is so immediately satisfying. It ticks so many boxes for me as a, well, as a whiskey drinker and a whiskey novelty enjoyer as well. Mm. Very scrummy. The kind of excellence you, um, ah, oh, this was those unique characters you get from whiskey that is young, but still mature, if that makes sense. Like it is, it's chronologically not been around a long time, but it's been matured in such a way that it has got 
uh, the right amount of age or right amount of heft. It's not immature. It's not too yeah. young. No, it's it's mm. vibrant. Yeah, um, it's got it's still got all of its vibrancy. It mm. is ready. It is not old. Um, it is. Yeah, ready. it hasn't been rushed out the door. It's got to where it needs to be to be frankly excellent. Mm. Well then. Mm. Pocono, consider yourselves on the radar. Mm. We will have to hunt out um, some more from that. Yes. I'm certain you can get minis of these ones. I will have to go and do a mm. whip around at Whiskey Glossy. They've got something for me. Because yeah. um, I want more of this mm -hmm. and to see what else they do. In the meantime, Slandra, welcome back. Us, and consequently yourselves. Mm. Good to see everybody. Um, we're going to have some more, maybe even more. Ooh, I know how you love the conventional stuff. Mm. We've got some proper conventional stuff from proper Scotland coming down the pipe. So buckle in for mm -hmm. that one. Because um, actually it, it is pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. But you'll just have to wait. We will see you next time. Slandra once again.